Hey there, welcome back to the final part of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. I hope you found inspiration in our guest journey this week. Today, we'll leave you with some key takeaways and actionable insights that you can lean on. Now let's wrap up with some powerful lessons that can help guide you on your own path. Don't forget to tune in for a brand new guest next week on Monday. But for now, enjoy this week's. Please subscribe to the channel if you don't already as well. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Here I am, about to put myself through bankruptcy, lose a house that I bought when I was like 22, 23 years old. Because, you know, I got that house because I was living week to week on a construction wage, but still couldn't save money. So my way of thinking was, let's get a house, then that's four savings coming out. At least I've got a house and I can keep piling and doing what I need to do. And and then, mm. you know, it's, fast forward, it, life's going good. But the vision I had for the gym wasn't going so well. I felt like I was letting Sherelle down, letting my son down. But at the end of the day, that, that hardest, that was one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make. But also coming out the other end, it was also the best decision I've ever made. Yeah. So you, you, you lost the, 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 it would be obviously it was your house, but it became a family home for the three of yeah. you at that point. So you lost yeah. your house because, um, you were losing money in the business, correct? Yeah. Did the, how did your brothers feel of the decision being made that you had to shut it down? Oh, they didn't like it. Um, yeah, they weren't happy about it. And, you know, looking at the numbers and I was running everything through it and I was like, you know, we'll get out the other end, but some things need to happen. And I just didn't believe that what I was putting forward was going to be actioned, you know, like how much drama do we have to create in our working environment, in our own business? Like I wouldn't want to train there if I was experiencing, you know, the owners arguing in, in the, in the gym or in the office, you know, it just wasn't a nice place to train if you were at that, in that moment at the gym and the two owners who are brothers are going off at each other. No, so. so the people could see this in the gym then? Uh, sometimes it spilled out of the office because it could get a bit heated. Um, yeah. And, you know, and having very similar upbringings, so even though, yeah, this, it'd get heated, it'd spill out of the office and it'd just have to sort of leave it so it didn't escalate further. But, you know, the, the offices are still paper-thin walls. You try yeah. to turn the music up, but yeah, it's just it wasn't the 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 vision I had for that place. Um, but I knew I had to shut it down. I was like, I don't want to keep running this. I don't want to. I don't even want to get the gym into a good place because I still have to be in this relationship. Um, yeah, and yeah. the relationship is is now toxic. This business has ruined that relationship where. Really, that business, it just brought out the true colours in the sense that I guess I was blinded to because they were family. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's after that, I closed it down and I didn't speak to one of my brothers for almost three years. Uh, and then when we did touch base, um, you know, as, as hard as that was, it was also a blessing in disguise for him too because it was enough for him to get to a point where it's like okay i need to do some work on myself so it sort of kick-started his growth journey as well so you know we re we reconnected and his journey is still going and i don't believe any of that would have happened if i didn't make the big decision to just go back to square one yeah and so you said he's still on that journey. How is more importantly, or alongside his journey, is equally as important. Um, how is your relationship with him now? Yeah, it's it, it's back to how it, it was. You know, it's um, okay. one thing I've I've learned on this journey, and and having a wife as a psychologist is, is having boundaries. 
Um, yeah. So, you know, when we reconnected, there was clear boundaries put in place. Um, and he was very uh, receptive of these boundaries and understood it. And, um, you know, when we chat, he, you know, if he needs help in some aspect or where he's sort of struggling and we can openly chat about it or, you know, it, it just gets um, in, entwined into our conversation where it's, you know, I might share something that I've been through because of what he's, you know, he might be experiencing something. So I'll just, I'll, I'll share about, well, I've experienced that too. And this is yeah. what I experienced and this is sort of what helped me. So, yeah. Amazing. In, he, he's got a good brother uh, to get advice from because of the transformation you've made over the last decade. So, and obviously having Sherelle in the family as well. I mean, who, who better to turn to? Oh my Lord. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, the business closed. Um, what did you do career wise then after that? I, I had actually, um, I started an online, online business coaching business when I still had the gym. So I created that to bring in extra income so, you know, I had my own mentors and stuff like that. And, and, you know, I was about to become a father. So I was like, you know what? I want to, I want to coach men. I want to coach fathers. And I called it the better dad, better dad's movement. Um, so when the gym closed down, I kept that open for myself. Uh, and I was, I was coaching men around Australia and helping them to just get their lives back on track. You know, we'd, we'd focus on the physical aspect focus on the physical side first because it was like you know if you can get to your yourself get yourself into the gym and get yourself moving you're going to feel good because that's mm -hmm. where i started you know it's if you can't get to the gym then it's like do you enjoy running do you enjoy riding you know after work do you have a dog take your dog for a walk take your kids for a walk and so they start becoming more active and then from there it's you know they're connecting more with their children they're drinking less, and it, it it was really just my journey um, that they were uh, living, you know, and it, it was great to give back in that in that sense and creating a, a really great community of, of men that were overcoming big obstacles and um, creating these beautiful relationships with their wives or even reconnecting with their wives because, um, you know, they're given the ultimatums, like, if you don't change, then I'm leaving you properly. Mm -hmm. And to get these men to um, a spot in their lives where their wives uh, are moving back into their home with them or they're starting to share a bed again with their wives and their kids are wanting to hang out with them, it was it was great. It, was, it, was, it felt good and that's what I was searching for. I was like, I want to feel good, you know, like, I've had money working construction. I worked my way up the ladder in construction. I was running teams and, and I, that's when I decided to open business and use a bit of a, an exit strategy and I'd done that. And, you know, I was like, you know, I've been chasing money. I was like, what feels good? So I stuck with that and that felt good. And, and uh, since then it's like, what feels good now? And that sort of led me to the path of, team mentoring and thriving sons it's like i got to a point of coaching fathers and men that i was like you know what i feel like i've been focusing on the wrong chapter of my life i feel like i could do more good if i was to focus on 12 year old 15 year old lj because my thinking was if i could get to these men 10 15 years before all of this happened they could have had 10 or 15 years or 20 years of happy life. So I started to slowly uh, step away from coaching fathers and I started to uh, really dive into healing more of my inner child because I knew if I was going to step into that, that I need to do some more work there and I need to go in these dark places and just just sit with it. And, and allow myself to create that safe space and healing. And here I am now, I'm, I'm coaching teenage boys and and the same way as I, I coach my son's team, it's how can I be that safe space for you? What do you need from me and how can I help you achieve what you want to achieve? It's, 
it's um yeah you going from it's focusing the, on what's good men... Yeah, well, you're going from the men to the teenage. What you're doing there is what we touched on before, is going to root cause, preventing it getting to that point, hopefully, them going hopefully, down that yeah. road where they're not present with their own kids or not present with themselves even um, and not present with their wives and losing connect, disconnect with their partners. And, yeah, it's an amazing journey, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. What's the future then? What's the future plans um, for you? So what you, what are you doing every day professionally at the moment then in the day is this a full time thing or is there have you got a, another line of work as well yeah so i'm still in construction um i've got one foot in the door of construction because that allows me to do what i'm doing it allows yeah. me to um i'm very lucky where um i've built up a very good reputation in construction that I can I can work in places and choose my hours and uh, nice. you know my my work speaks for itself my experience so um, and it allows me to still focus on family like there are some places that wanted me to work for them and they're like yep these are our hours and this is what I want you to do and I was like cool well these are my hours and this is what I want to do and it's <laughs> if you can't meet that that's okay but. These are my terms. <laughs> so, um, you know, I like I, I'm it. choosing my terms. I'm, you know, one of my terms with where I'm working now is I only want to do X amount of hours because it's important that I'm there for my, scum, my son's school pickup. Uh, I value my son's school pickup and I want to be there as much as I can for his childhood. And I also only want to work these days a week because I'm building a mentoring program for teenage boys. and. To me, that's my future and that's what's important to me. So um, you will get the most out of me the days I'm here, which will still be twice fold of any other person that would be here in this position. But in return, I just ask for these things so I can be the family man I want to be, but also be the serviceman I want to be for these young boys and his parents and in his in their life so that's where i'm at at the moment amazing yeah i i, I mean i totally relate to it because i left the teaching industry to become a casual teacher um and i did that because i wanted to create a, a space for me to work on myself to also be present with my family which i'm still massively working on every day but also to provide time for the podcast because this podcast wouldn't be able to exist if i was doing teacher hours you know um, so I, can, I feel like we, we, you know, we're following a similar path just in different industries and, and so on. Yes. Um, so I can totally relate to your mindset in that regard. Um, I'm earning far less money than I was, um, but you can keep your 30 K that I'm losing because no, it, it used to be massively, massively used to be about climbing the ranks uh, again, climbing the ranks in the correct way. That's where me and Cheryl yeah. line up with with the leadership side of things and, and, and the workforce and, you know, my trauma was being bullied in the workplace. And, um, so yeah, I, I, you know, I connect with both of you on, on different levels and, uh, and, and put them together sort of thing, you know, but, um, yeah, keep your 30 K, um, people, sometimes I can feel it from, from people that I'm close to going, oh, you know, when are you going to get back into a contracted teacher? I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't yeah. want, that because they control me i don't want to i want to control myself i want to do my six and a half hours a day and i want to come home and i want to do my shit because i choose to and if i choose to take a day off tomorrow nobody questions where i am and i absolutely love that feeling love it well you're pursuing a purpose bigger than they could ever grasp and i think when you step out of the norm a lot of people can't fathom what you're doing and why you would do that it's like they think you're yeah. letting your family down where truthfully you're you're living up to your purpose you're not letting yourself down so in return your family is getting the best person or the best version of you because you get to authentically strive for a purpose that is bigger than working a, a full-time job or achieving mm -hmm you know, that high level rank of leadership or the increase in salary, because at the end of the day, what I'm afraid of is that 
I will reach the pinnacle of a construction company and then realize that I've had to work away for my kids, most of my kids' childhood, that yes, they had such a lovely house. They had such a lovely car. They had all these amazing things they ever wanted, but they didn't have a father who was present. And I can't mm. change that. Yeah. So it's, yeah, well, what you're doing is perfect. And what you'll find is that for people like us who are trying to reach beyond is that we're okay with uh, earning that little bit less now because we can have that bigger picture where it's, you know, two years, five years, 10 years, hmm. I am going to be in a place where most people just talk about and dream about like, oh, one Powerball, you know, just imagine one Powerball. But it's like, imagine if you took up one new skill just over the next 12 months that could create your Powerball or create this lifestyle that you wish you could live, but you're just too afraid to step away from that income or step away from that title, sacrifice a little bit more. Uh, mm. and, and you said this earlier, that delayed gratification. It's, 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 it's scary, you know, like, yeah. but if you can achieve it or if you can work towards it and break it down, it makes it worth it. Feels good. Oh, it, it really does. And, um, you know, when I when I said I was making a podcast, people were like, are you crazy? That's how I felt anyway. I don't know if yeah. that's how they, you know, perceived it, but um, that's how I felt that I felt that they thought that. And, uh, uh, I'm, you know, I'm 20, I'm currently 23 episodes in. You will be like episode 33 or something like that. And uh, I, it's, it's going strong. Uh, so I feel like I'm not doing it to prove other people wrong. I'm doing it to prove myself right. And that's the difference, yes. isn't it? Yes. You know? Um, How does it feel anyway. for you? Oh, mate. It's, I feel you're the only person who's ever really asked me, to be fair. Um, but I, I, I know my purpose now uh, outside of being the dad I always wanted to be, being the, you know, the leader I always wanted to be uh, and needed. But I'm, I feel like I'm... I feel like I'm being the man I always wanted and needed as well. I'm doing this and I, I, this is my purpose. I love it. And if, if I could make my money doing this, great, but I'm not, and I still love it. So I know that tells me I'm doing the right thing, you know? So anyway, Beautiful. this is about you though, LJ, um, coming towards the end. <laughs> I was actually going to press you a bit more, but I was like, okay. That, that's no, no, go on, <laughs> go on, do it. Cause no one ever does it to me. So go on. No, no, no. I was just going to ask you like, but how does it feel like you're you're naming these other things of but on the inside and when you're running these like how do you actually feel if you had to put a name to it like is it joy is it yeah you know, like what what's the emotion you feel behind pursuing this and putting yourself through what other people deem as hardships or struggle um I, how does it make you feel it, 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 You've just na you've just nailed it. I complete I feel complete joy. Um I'm so proud of how it um feels and appears to me. And then when somebody tells me how amazing it looks and comes across and for those who have listened to it and said how from the beginning have said how much I've improved, um, even in just terms of listening to the guest or things like that, I I just, I don't know. I just, I get goosebumps. I, I don't even know to, how to explain it. But generally speaking, the word joy is everything I feel. Like the first thing I think about in the morning and, and I just grit away every day and I'm always finding new ways. I'm becoming more creative. And sometimes I find better ways to work my day or my week and cut it up and edit it and think of these new ideas, you know, making the business cards. And then I've got the business card here. And then as you can see, I've got the cups and I've got hoodies and hats coming and I just, I'm just dead proud of it. I've got a magnet on the side of the car. I'm just proud of it, man. I just love it. Um, I get a little bit, ner I get a little bit of fear before the countdown when I knew I had today on, um, not scared in a bad way, but a nervous way going, it's going to be a fucking good conversation. Uh, but I get, I think I get nervous and scared cause I want the guests to enjoy it too. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I think I get a little bit nervous about that. And, uh, there's parts of me that do question myself still, 
but it always seems to turn out okay. So it's okay. Uh, do you do anything yeah. in particular when you when you feel this nervousness? To I have a shower. Yeah, I go and have a shower. Yeah, wash it I had away. Had a shower before. Sorry. To wash it away. In a way, maybe. Um, but to get my alertness up and to just feel empowered and uh, go. I remember why I'm doing it. Um, and I wear this for symbolism. I wear as wear the black t-shirt as well for, to be strong and to go, you hold this power yourself. And, um, yeah, I keep erring because I'm, I've never been questioned like this before. <laughs> <laughs> well, myself and Cheryl toyed with, uh, starting a podcast. <laughs> you should do. No, you should do. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You should definitely do it. Sure. You, you guys would be great at it. Um, yeah, no, I, you know, yeah, I've complete joy is you've, you've named, named, I'm, I'm excited constantly about yeah. when get, guests meet, message me. I've had a, two guests meet me today. I'm, tomorrow night I'm meeting a Grammy, a guy who's part of the Grammy nomination award system. He's part of the, the, the people who choose the nominations as an artist, but lost his, I'm not going to give it away, but lost his yeah. partner and bringing up the daughter himself. But he's a, a singer. He's from America and they, his representative contacted me and I'm like, I must be doing something right if these people are finding me and I'm not yep. finding them, even though I'm happy to look for people and their beautiful stories and journeys. But people seem to come to me and I just love it, man. I just wake up to these beautiful emails and I just, yeah, I love it. It's joy. Joy is the perfect word. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Um, For you, for the future of your legacy project, how's that going to look for you before we come to the end then yes so like i want to be both feet in with the team coaching with with thriving sons um Thriving, yeah. as we know i'm about to uh welcome a, a third child into our family so it's for me i have this six-week online program that's ready to go it's it's waiting for baby to get here and making sure we settle mum and bub into this family and they get the attention they need. But um, for me, it's, it's finishing this year strong with team mentoring, uh, the online coaching. And, you know, it's like I have this big vision where I want to run these uh, retreats for teen boys where it's, you know, it's a, it's a rites of passage in a way. It's it's getting them together and helping them start creating or mapping out their future and identifying the values they want to instill in themselves and and giving them the greatest head start to life it's you know and in these retreats it's it's testing their metal it's like putting them through some tough obstacles to give them the chance to overcome some big things because as we we're talking about before is kids these days they they're not given the opportunity to test themselves like boys love to take risks but we keep telling them to be careful we keep telling mm -hmm. or trying to remove all the risk from their lives where it's it's not helping them we need mm -hmm. to allow them to take some risks you know within reason so they can build up confidence. It's like, my son doesn't have confidence. Well, what, what, what sort of, um, you know, what sort of hardships or what big things has he been through to really test what he can do? You know, it's, and, and it's being able to put them in a safe space where they can experience, you know, the full stress of what their body can take them through. It's, you know, taking them through a journey of breath work, of brotherhood, of just in, in putting great men in front of them that can really help shape the man they want to become. So, yeah, I just have this massive vision of changing the trajectory of these young boys who don't have the the guidance or the male figures in their lives that could really change their life for good. And it's sad to say, but there's so many out there that need that. It is. It wasn't until I started 
in this space where I was like, wow, there's so many boys. Mm. And, you know, there's still so many more that their parents don't have the awareness that the environment bearing isn't good. So yeah. for the yeah. parents and the teachers who have reached out, it's it's such a beautiful thing that these boys have that person who can say, hey, I've got someone who could just benefit from a conversation with you. And I'm like, let's do it. And I couldn't think of a better person to do it with the man and you of the journey you've been on and the transformation that you've been on. Because some people just have the journey, but not the transformation. So they've got the experience, but they haven't got the experience of the change. And you have all of that. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to watch this space. And what I'll do, LJ, is I'll, um, I'll get everything, all the social media platforms, and I'll put them all in the show notes. So if anyone is watching this who can relate to that and know somebody in their family, friends, close circle, community, whatever it may be, they can reach out to you wherever they are in the world if you're happy for me to do that. Yeah, please. That'd be great. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, two final questions. If, well, actually, before I ask the two final questions, if there's anything that we've missed that you feel is important to include, is there anything? I always tend to ask this question, so it's not, you know, me just thinking we've missed something. I generally, genuinely try and think, get the guest to think if there's a piece of information that we could get through to uh, from your journey that we've missed, but you think we should include, now's the time to put oh. it in. Well, <laughs> we've, we've, we painted a good picture of my yeah. upbringing and my childhood and for sure, my teenage years had its ups and downs as well, you know. I like to think I, I had a very normal childhood or teenage <laughs> years, but they they weren't. And I first noticed yeah. that on my year 12 retreat where we had to sort of talk about our families and, and in a circle when it was my turn, people started crying and started giving me a hug when I started to sort of talk about how my days wow. were with training and how hard my father was and, I was just like, what the hell is going on here? I was like, why Why the hell are these people wow. crying? And afterwards, well, they give me hugs. They're like, man, I never knew. I was like, never knew what? They're like, that your upbringing in your childhood is like that. I was like, what do you mean? Like, what's yours like? They're like, mine's nothing yeah. like that. Like, I play. I'm allowed to be a kid. I'm like, what's that meant to me? And so that sort of stuck with me. I was like, what? What? Don't cry for me. There's nothing wrong with my childhood. So, so but, was um, that pivotal for you then? It, it's it's a core cool memory, but it wasn't pivotal. It wasn't enough to be like, hey, it was more like, yeah. no, they've got the issue. I don't have the issue. Um, but you know, it's 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 one of those core cool memories where it was like, I need to make a change. Where it, it comes up, it was like, yeah, something's not right. And it hasn't been right for a long time. So, yeah, it's, um, I, I think we've, we've covered a lot. And, you know, the man I am today is, is not a one man journey. It's, it comes down to having a support system. And I have my beautiful wife as, as my biggest supporter. And, you know, me, her biggest supporter, like I'm her biggest supporter as well. My children, like they are. Yeah. They've given me a purpose and helped me heal in many ways that would never have been possible. Like holding my son for the first time and telling him I love him felt awkward because I had that awkward relationship with my father. So I made it my my daily ritual at night time is when I'm putting him to sleep is that I would say I love you. And then, you know, it, it just went from the small I love you to when he got a bit older to reading him his first, well, reading him his a book to bed, like that felt strange because I never experienced that growing up either. So I had to sit in my own discomfort of like, this feels so strange and so weird, but I will keep going with it. And then, you know, it became a nighttime ritual with my son and we'd be like, book? I'm like, yeah, buddy, let's do this. Like, what book have you got? And you know, it, it's it's healed me in the sense where it's it's more or less just been peeling back these layers that I've had to put around myself to protect 
that in a child that wasn't safe, that wasn't protected back then, that had to put on this bravado, that had to create this identity to be safe. Um, so, yeah, like, I'm, I'm a very Beautiful. lucky man to be where I am today. You create, mate, you're not lucky. You created your own look there, mate. <laughs> you work goddamn hard to create that look, let me tell you. there's There's no look about it. I don't believe so anyway. Yeah. I, I don't believe in look to a certain point. I You work goddamn hard, man, and it's well-deserved. Yeah. Look, I still have um, my bad days. There's some spoken about before, and... Yeah, who doesn't know? You know, like, it's one of the big things that I teach these boys, you know, well, as well as everything else as a breath work, and is visualisation, you know what I mean? For mm. better or worse, and for better... You know, um, I, I get brought in to do some talks with local football teams and um, I take them through this breath work visualization practice. And it's awesome to see them at the end of it. Um, but then when the teenage boys who I who I coach, I use this visualization technique, not just for visualizing all this good, but another way that I've had to. I've had to, I guess, quell or um bring satisfaction to my anger is that i've actually had to visualize the beating visualize the hurting of other people to take myself out of those actions so it's yeah. it's like i'll get angry and the only way that i've been able to manage this anger is to allow it to pass through through visualization it's like what do I want to do to this person? And I'll visualize everything that I want to do to this person in my mind to allow it to go through me rather than allow me to become reactive and aggressive. Um, but yeah, I thought that was something worth bringing up because, you know, we people talk about visualization and the growth aspect of, you know, you can change your life by visualizing all this positive, but visualization for me has also been on the other end of you know when you've had the anger issues and upbringing that i've had is that i'm going to visualize the absolutely crap being beaten out of you because i need that because mm. if i don't give myself that whether it's visualizing or in real life which i've had to transfer it to visualization that it's going to be stored and it's only a matter of time before that kettle goes off you know yeah very good point about yeah i've never looked at it like that before that's a very good point yeah i i i did something similar with my stuff i visualize myself walking down the corridors and i know it's slightly different to yours i visualize myself going through that those traumatic experiences of what i went through and um it it it's in a way it's therapeutic isn't it yeah in the in the long run if you could give somebody a piece of advice that's going through something similar now to your journey, what piece of advice would that be? First one would be to, you know, reach out for help to whoever that safe person is for you. If you don't have that safe person like I didn't, then it's, you got to focus on the ones. What's that one thing that you can commit to and change tomorrow, today. It doesn't have to be a massive thing. It can just be, you know, eating one better meal every day. It, we just need to start focusing on what's that one small good thing you can bring into your life every day that you can be consistent with that's easy so that it feels like you're winning in this life rather than letting yourself down or others down we just need to have a win and we need to have consistent wins and it's we don't need to break world records we just need to have one small win every day and if you can start there and you can feel yourself feel better and you can keep it up then it's like okay well what else can i do what can i add on top of this every day that could also make me feel good hmm. and then it's just build on it from there and and just let go 
you've got to let go of your past. You've got to let go of who you've hurt, what you've done before, because you can't go back. You can't change what's happened, but we can change what happens next. And the people that follow you on the way are meant to be there. The ones who drop off were never meant to be there in the first place. Completely agree. I love it. Last and final question. I feel like we already know the answer. But if you could put it into one line, one simple line to remember, what is your purpose, LJ? Uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's creating that one simple line. It's, it is. Um, it's hard. Yeah, it is like. I know my purpose is to work with teenage boys, but it's bigger than that. It's it's to it's to create a new masculinity with teenage boys where they can be authentically themselves in their power without fear of judgment. Mate, when I put you on a spot and put yes, you just put it in one line. <laughs> It's a pretty good goddamn line. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. You, you why... hit me for a sec, but um, I guess. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, love it. LJ, you're a beautiful man. I love you. And um, I've really enjoyed meeting your family. Um, what an incredible journey you've been on and your family have been on. It's um, I've enjoyed having you part of uh, the Leading Our Own Way family. You're part of the community now forever, whether you like it or not. And, um, mate, I really thank appreciate you, you coming privilege. on and being part of my journey. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Andy. It's, um, I've really enjoyed this chat. So, yeah, you're, you're a very lucky person because to run a podcast like this and to allow people to become vulnerable and speak about their life experiences and their, their, their trauma from their past, it takes a special type of person. And, you know, you are that person and your podcast is growing. So it's showing that you've created a space where people feel comfortable to um, open up and and share just to help the wider world in a sense. So thank you. No, thank you. I appreciate the kind words, and but it's all down to you guys. If if you guys weren't willing to open up and be vulnerable and feel safe to be vulnerable, um, this wouldn't exist. So um Thanks for being a part of my journey. Um, I appreciate it. So thank you. And thanks, mate. Well, thank you. And, uh, well, everybody, thanks for joining in for the episode with LJ and myself. And um, please tune in to Shirelle's if you missed it last week um, because they are, I always seem to have a bit of a husband and wife or a father and daughter thing going on. But uh, uh, thank you so much, guys. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll be back next week for a brand new guest. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Thanks for listening and watching Leading Our Own Way. So we can stay together forever and share more incredible journeys, please subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss next week's episode and what that amazing guest has to offer to the world. Please support Leading Our Own Way and we'll get you on next week's episode.